All right. Um, I just want to start by thanking you all for coming in this last week of school when it is really busy um, and taking the time to come see your kids in their fairy tale performances. They've worked really hard. Um, we've written fairy tales, we've read fairy tales, and now we worked on acting out these fairy tales. We're super excited to present them to you. I also want to say a big huge thank you to Mrs. Weber and her SLC um, uh, and the kiddos that are with her for um, joining our plays. Um, it was fun to get to work with them. It was fun to have extra hands in here. Um, and uh, a couple of the plays were directed by our SLC teachers. A couple of them were directed by um, myself in here. Um, and it was just such a great collaboration. So without further ado, I'll stop, stop talking and let the kids take over. And I hope you enjoy our show. based on the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little elephants who lived with their parents. When the elephants grew old enough, they went out into the world to live on their own. The first elephant built a small wooden shack. One day, there was a knock at the door. So he wrote a note and slipped it under the elephant's door. It read, squeak, squeak, squeak on the big bad mouse. I'll rip up your garden. I'll tear down your house. I'll tug on your tail. I'll pull on your ears. I'm mighty and mean. I'm the worst of your fears. Later that day, the elephant found the note. A big bad mouse. Oh, no, I've never seen a mouse, but it sounds very scary. I imagine that it was larger than an elephant. It has big yellow eyes, yellow eyes and long feet. Oh, no, help. There's a big bad mouse on the loose. I must run away before it comes the elephant ran through the wooden shack, tripping over tables and bumping into chairs. The terrified elephant left from the back door of the house and ran all the way to the second elephant's house. The second elephant lived in a brick house. It was larger than the first elephant's wooden shack. It also had a doorbell, which the first elephant rang. Ring, ring. Hello, who's there? It's me, Uncle Scared. There's a mouse on the loose. Can I stay at house? Please, please. A mouse? I've never seen a mouse before, but it sounds very scary. I imagine a mouse a few minutes passed. The two elephants sat in frightened silence. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. The two elephants looked at each other, their, their, and their terror grew. Who could it be? I'm not answering it. Don't look at me. I'm not answering it either. <laughs> the big bad mouse kept ringing the bell, but no one answered. Finally, he grew frustrated and slipped a note. Under the door, it read, squeak, squeak, squeak on the big bad mouse. I'll rip up your garden. I'll tear down your house. I'll tug on your tail. I'll pull on your ears. I'm mighty and mean. I'm the worst of your fears. What am I taking about? Oh, no. This is horrible. This is terrifying. Just come the big bad mouse. Just come to my house. Oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? There's a big, there's a humongous, terrifying, fierce mouse on the loose. Run. We must run our lives. The two of Terrified elephants stumbled out of the house, tangling off their tails and tripping over one another. They left through the back door of the house. They didn't stop running until they arrived at the third elephant's house. The third elephant lived in an enormous mansion. It had a long driveway and a swimming pool. The two elephants rang the doorbell, and James the butler answered. As soon as he opened the door, they ran past him, shouting and waving their arms wildly. Oh my, it's terrifying, it's horrible. Help us, do something. Call, help, help, call the police, call the army. Get a hold. Call yourself, uh, both of you. Now slow down and tell you what you're so frightened of. A mouse! A mouse? Why didn't you say so? i never seen a mouse before. I imagine a mouse would be humongous, larger than this mansion. I think it might be scared of your fire. This is quite tomorrow. 
The three elephants huddled in fear. They remained very still, listening with extreme care. After a few minutes, the doorbell rang. Don't answer, James. Why not, Master Elephant? It's in the house, James. And you know, you're terrified. You're scared. Fire, we're in the mouth. Don't be ridiculous. Mice are tiny furry creatures that scurry about and you see them buried. James went to open the door. The three elephants were so frightened now that their eyes were popping out and their ears stood straight from their heads. Well, what have we here? A little tiny mouse. The three elephants walked very nervously toward the door. The first and second elephants were looking over the shoulder of the third elephant. The three frightened elephants started, stared at the door, but no one appeared to be there besides James the butler. They looked to the left, they looked to the right, they looked up, then they looked down. There on the doorstep stood a little tiny mouse. Wait, you're so small. We've never seen a mouse before. Really not that Again. At last, the mouse had learned that, el that elephants are very large. The mouse never again threatened to rip up an elephant's garden or tear down an elephant's house. Everyone lived happily ever after. to the lady, it started to move. It was a popsicle boy. Popsicle boy wriggled free, jumped down from the truck, and started to run away. boy began to run through the playground. A girl who was jumping rope saw him and looked to love hungrily. It's my lucky day. I'm tired of jumping rope. But here comes a giant orange popsicle coming right towards me. Popsicle boy is running very fast. Now when he ran right past the jump rope girl. Wait, stop. It's so hot outside. It's so cool and so tasty. You can jump double dutch till you're 103. I'm a popsicle boy and you'll never catch me. There was a boy riding his bike around the playground. He was hot and tired too. When he saw the popsicle boy, he was sure he could catch him on his bike. Pass him and pass him and pop to ever seen. It's also my favorite way to hold. There's no way to hear I can outrun my bike. By now, popsicle boy is streaking through the playground at tremendous speed. The boy and bike cannot keep up. Wait. You can pedal around till you're 103. 
I'm the popsicle boy, and you'll never catch me. Now, popsicle boy had run almost to the end of the playground. Suddenly, he was spotted by a dog. The dog began to chase after the popsicle boy. The dog got closest enough to take one to t to the popsicle boy of anyone. In fact, the dog got close enough to take one big slip. But then, even the dog could not keep up. It stopped running and started to pant underneath the hot sun. You get slobber and howl until you're 103. And a popsicle boy, and you'll never catch me. Popsicle boy had run had outturned everyone in the playground. The little baby, the jump rope girl, the boy on bike, and the dog. He was free at last. He walked through the city for a while. He got on a bus, he rode out to the beach where he lay down in the sand. Popsicle boy lay on the beach and the hot sun beat down on him. For a while he enjoyed it. He thought perhaps I'd get a good tan, but then he began to notice something very strange was happening to him. Please, oh please, somebody save me. I'm the popsicle boy and I'm melting quickly. Oh me, oh my, won't anyone help me? I'm a popsicle boy. Now be in wasting, you see. All afternoon the sun kept shining brightly. All afternoon the popsicle boy melted away. By the end of the day, all that was left was a little the stick, which was stuck in the middle of an orange white pole. The end. <laughs>
but the turkey monkey was already speeding away. Meanwhile, Little Late Riding Hood was still counting. The tricky monkey arrived at Grandma's house. He knocked on the door and she answered. This is an emergency, ma'am. There's been a tornado, earthquake, thunderstorm headed this way. Well, I don't know. It looks so sunny outside and you're a very strange young looking man. There's no time to waste, ma'am. You, you have to go to the basement right away. That's the only safe place to make tornado, earthquake, thunderstorm. Well, all right, but I just don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> Grandma went to the basement. The tricky monkey lumbered upstairs to her bedroom. He put on her pajamas and nightcap. He jumped into her bed. <laughs> Meanwhile, Little Late Riding Hood was still counting. Ready, not monkey, here I come. Suddenly, Little Late Riding Hood realized she was late to Grandma's. She didn't have time to play hide and go seek with the monkey. Oh no, Mom said not to be late to Grandmother's house. I lost track of time playing that silly game. Little Late Riding Hood ran all the way to Grandma's house. When she arrived, the door was wide open, so she ran upstairs. I feel very well, dear. Why don't you sit by the bed? When Little Late Riding Hood sat down, she noticed how strange her grandma looked. Why, Grandma? That's where I'm swinging. If you sweep up your whole life, your arm can marry Harry and Mom. Why, Grandma? What strange looking ears do you have? That's where listening to music. If you listen to music, your ears get very big and weird looking. <laughs> Wait, Grandma, what a, what a big mouth you have. That's where eating banana nut bread. With that, the tricky monkey reached for the banana nut bread, but just then, Grandma stepped into the room and snatched the bread away. Too late, no banana bread for you. But! But! Shame on you, monkey. Trying to trick an old grandma. Now leave her at once, or I'll call the zookeeper. The tricky monkey, still dressed in grandma's pajamas and nightcap, <laughs> ran out of the house and was never seen again. Spiderella, based on Cinderella. Spiderella lived with her two ladybug stepsisters. The stepsisters are very mean. They are constantly making fun of Spiderella. They always made Spiderella do all the chores. We're both beautiful ladybugs. We have pretty spots and dainty wings. We have eight legs. <coughs> we have six legs. You have eight legs. 
Yeah, you read a spider well. You have two extra legs. The only thing your extra legs are good for doing is cleaning in. Is cleaning and doing house. Go spin us some gowns for the ball. What? Kate, okay, what the? I mean, I mean, yeah, you read a spider well. You have two extra legs. The only thing your extra legs are good for doing is house. Hop to it, Spiderella. Put those extra legs to work. Scrub the pantry, clean out the kitchen. We're ladybugs. We're too sweet and pretty to to do house. <coughs> Besides, you might we wouldn't hurt one of our beautiful wings. Spiderella wrote about her work savvy. The two ladybug stepsisters simply sat around the house chatting and nuts, gossiping. They were both very excited. There was gonna be a big a big bug ball thrown by the cicada prince. I'm so excited. I want to look so beautiful so that the cicada prince will fall in love with me. I'm going to wear a lovely ball gun so the cicada prince will ask me to marry him. I think to wear the ball ball too. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You have eight legs, not six. How would you even dance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have two extra legs, Spiderella. You have two extra legs, Spiderella. The only thing they're good for is spinning, is cleaning the house. And Anyway, let's go spin us some gowns for the ball. The day of the ball run, the cruel lady looks. The day of the ball run, the cruel lady looks. Step sister set off wearing the gowns that Spiderella was fun. Spiderella stayed home dressed in red clothing and doing chores. Spiderella washed and dried the dishes with her hands. She was very really sad. I wish I could go to the football. It would be so much fun. Spiderella was crying so hard that she didn't even know that she had a visitor. It was a brown insect with wings and a tiny tear. It was her very bad Why are you crying, Spiderella? I wish I could go to the football. And you shall, my dear. I am your fairy godmother, and I will grant you. And Spiderella, go fetch an acorn. Spiderella picked in an ace round acorn. The fairy godmother flapped her wings. And it and the acorn turned into a tiny acorn brooch. It was drawn by four strong ants. <laughs> Thank you, Fairy Godma. What a wonderful way to travel the bug ball, but I don't have anything to wear. Don't worry, my dear. I'll give you a beautiful outfit. The fairy Godma flapped her wings. Suddenly, spider owl's rags turned into a tiny be into a turned into a beautiful dress. The fairy Godma flapped her wings one more time. Glass slippers appeared before Spiderell. They were eight of them set up in a neat row. Spiderell put on the eight glass slippers and climbed into the acorn coach down by the four strong ants. Well, I'm out to the bug ball. Have a wonderful time, dear, but remember, be back home by the stroke of midnight, otherwise your acorn coach will turn back to an acorn and your gown will turn back to rags. <coughs> <laughs> Spiderella had a wonderful time. She danced with a very hands-on cricket and an extremely human soli pole. <laughs> and now I'd like to play a song for the most beautiful bug at the ball. He's walking right toward me! Here, bug it up! Says he's walking right towards me! <laughs> the cicada birds walked past the two ladybugs and stood directly in front of Spiderella. He began to rub his wings together and made a lovely buzzing sound. Spiderella couldn't believe it. The prince was playing a special song just for her. She was the bug of ball. You're a beautiful bug. Together we could be snug. We could live in a rug or inside an old jug. What a lovely song. <laughs> thank, thank you. Would you care to dance the jitterbug with me? Spiderella. <laughs> Spiderella was <laughs> the and danced the jitter jitterbug. But seeing Spiderella realized that it was nearly my neck. She scurried out of the ball and said to her that she lost all the time and had a slippers. The next day, the skater prince traveled around the forest trying to find the beautiful bug that had captured his heart. He brought the eight tiny glass slippers with him. If he could find where they belonged to, he would have found his bug bug. He knocked on the door of the home where Spider and the two lady looks like. Who is it? Who is it? It's a skater prince! Well, open the door! Good afternoon, ladybugs. Hello, friends. Can I get you a lump of sugar with chew Hello, friends. Can I get you a glass of bug juice? 
No, thank you, Ladybugs, but I do have a favor to ask. Can each of you try on all these glass slippers? The second Ladybug stepsister tried on a glass slipper, but it was too small and then it fit. The first thing was just fine. There, I put on all six slippers. Now I'm going to put on my shoe lock. Now give me a big fat of candy because hands on. Not so fast. There are eight slippers, not six. Eight slippers! Wow. Just then, the cicada wins noticed right away. Spider Rail looked right in front of him. He asked her to try on a glass slipper. They fit, and she had the right number of legs. Eight. He found his love bug. You're, you're, you're the beautiful bug from the ball. I love you. So you'll be my little spider eye? Of course, but I'd like to get rid of these glass slippers. They're really hard to walk around in. And so Spider and the Cicada Prince are happily ever after. The Cicada Prince would, prince would often rub his wings together and sing silly songs. And Spider uh, always either went barefoot or wore sneakers. Mrs. Hoops, friend. 